you in the kingdom, Lord God. We thank you for what you have done for us, what you're getting ready to do right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. This is absolutely phenomenal, everybody. So we thank God for this opportunity. Amen. Glory to God. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. This is where we're going to start off. Now, your instructor to, tonight um, was originally scheduled to be Dr. Oliver Mack. Amen. Glory to God. And he was going to be out and he had a replacement, a sub. Amen. Glory to God, which was Dr. Barbara King. But when I saw that he was going to be out, I called Dr. King and I asked her, I said, can I have that um, master's, I mean, that doctorate class of a Christian, I'm not kingdom history 301. Amen. Glory to God that uh, uh, Dr. Oliver Mack was going to be out. And she told me, uh, well, yes, I mean, you, 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 you're the president. You can do whatever you want. I said, no, I haven't been in their class. I haven't been before them in a, in a, in a, in a couple of weeks or so. I missed them. Amen. Glory to God. I want to teach something other than Christian counseling, because once I start with Christian counseling, they may be mad at me with all the work that we're going to give them. Amen. Glory to God. So we're going to we're going to I wanted to be able to come here and take a good look at this kingdom history It's one of my favorite courts. Kingdom history is so important to me. I'm going to show you what I have in my office right here. Amen. Glory to God. In my office, I have this book that I am reading. Uh, 50 Pentecost and Charismatic Leaders that Every Christian Should Know. And this is from William C. Moore to a Amy Simple McPherson, Dave Wilkerson, Smith Wigglesworth, Catherine Coleman, amen. Uh, Watchman Nee, amen. Glory to God. All these, we, I mean, John Lake, all these different individuals. So I'm reading this in my office. In my briefcase, I have this book, amen. I keep with me. Now, this is my baby. That's why it's in my briefcase. The Pioneers of the Faith by Dr. Lester Sumrall. This is a must have for believers that want to uh, continue in the legacy of faith walkers. Amen. Glory to God. Now, it was a little pricey, but I, I, I tend to, amen, glory to God, invest in spiritual things. Amen. Glory to God. This small book alone was, I believe it was $104 for it. It's not sold anywhere else. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. So I wanted to invest in it so I can not only read it over and over and over and over again, but I have it to be able to hand down to my great, great grandchildren. Amen. Glory to God. They will have these tools. Amen. Glory to God. My great, great grand won't have to spend $104 on this book. Amen. Glory. In fact, this book, I plan on living in such a manner of representing the kingdom of God that this book just increased in value because my name is on the side of it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. I plan on living in such a way that it would impact for generations the glory of God in the earth. Amen. So that's why it's important for me to study kingdom history. I need to follow after the likeness and the pattern of those that have come before me and honor them and learn from them. Some of them, amen, glory to God. Some of them made some mistakes that I can learn from. Amen. I'm not one of those judgmental people where I'm going to see somebody make a mistake and then judge them about it and say, oh, I'll never do that. I'm one of those individuals where I see the mistake and I say, I better be on guard against that. I better watch that. Amen. I don't want to get caught like that. Amen. Glory to God. Doing this or having this in my heart or anything like that. So this is going to be really good tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Have you been enjoying kingdom history thus far? Amen. Well, it's going to get, as the as the older folks say, it's going to get good and gooder tonight. Amen. Glory to God. So Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. Dr. Pauline Jackson, you're not done yet. As soon as you finish with your eyelash, I want you to read verse 12 for me, if you would. Amen. Glory to God. Read verse 12 for me, if you can unmute and do that for me. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Hebrews 6 and 12. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Amen. Glory to God that you be not slothful. Thank you so much. You can remute for me. Amen. Glory to God that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Amen. Glory to God. That's extremely important that we understand what it means to inherit the promise. Amen. Glory to God. For us to inherit the promise and to follow after those who through faith and patience. What is the promise? The activity of the Holy Ghost. The activity of the Holy Ghost in the believer was the promise. God promised through Jesus to once again fill us with the spirit of God. That's the promise. Well, the Holy Ghost doesn't want to come live in you just to live in you. Amen. Glory to God without any activity. 
Amen. That's good to write down in case you're looking for some good stuff to write down. The Holy Spirit wants activity out of me. That's what he wants. He wants to use me as a vessel of activity. I am his vessel of activity. That's a good thing to write down right there. I am his vessel of activity. Amen. Glory to God. That's what I am. I am the vessel of activity in the earth. Glory to God. So we're going to go into lesson number four, and this is George Fox. Amen. Glory to God. I didn't mean to do that. Give me a second. Let me go back to this. Amen. Glory to God. I've done something. Amen. There we are. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to go, we're going to go back to George Fox. Amen. Glory to God. And, and now George Fox is the liberator of spirit. This is lesson number four. He's one of the reformers. Amen. Glory to God. Anybody want to, amen, glory to God, show of hands, want to tell me why the reformers are important? Anybody thus far want to share with me why the reformers are important? I'm looking for your hands. I'm looking for your hands. Anybody? Show of hands. No hands up. No hands up. Amen. Go ahead. Amen. Glory to God. Go ahead. Amen. Glory to God. Is that me, Greg? Yes, sir. Well, they, a, a reformer, they destroy those things that keeps people locked down. Okay. They're, they're, they're fighters. I thank you so much for the definition. I'm actually talking about the reformers that we're studying now, and that's a very, very good definition. They are their, their fighters. Go ahead, Dr. Evangelist Kenyon Johnson. Thank you so much, Dr. Greg. Uh, yes, sir. Um, these reformers, um, they they push, they push their way through, and they influence um, millions. And to this day, their teachings and their energy, everything that they put forth to change what was going on according to the Word of God, they 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 established, they they made people focus more on what the Word actually says. So they reformed people's um, belief system. Amen. Thank you so much for that. We're going to give it another shot. Amen. Go ahead, madam. I, I understand what the two uh, perspective doctors are saying. I saw it just a tad bit different. I, I, I saw that. But what I saw was they saw the system as it was, and it was corrupt. It was self-serving. And his both the, all the gentlemen thus far, um, their goal was to give the truth to the people, to allow the people to see what the word says, what God, what a relationship with God would be like, living in the uh, in a godly way, how that would benefit them. The the priests and the Roman Catholics, they were hiding that from the commoners, and all they were giving them is what the priests could get from the commoners. I say commoners, that may be a bad word, I'm sorry. The All people. Right. I thank you so much for that, amen. Glory to God. We're gonna give it one more shot, amen, to see if we can narrow down exactly what's been said right here. All right, let's go, Pastor Jay. Give it a shot. Glory to God, let's hope I get it correct. Uh, each of these reformers, they were instrumental in the unfolding of the revelation of God, which each reformer, there was a new unfolding uh, of the manifold wisdom of God to 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 push forward the, uh, the kingdom agenda. Amen. Glory to God. I thank you so much. In fact, everyone is correct. Amen. Glory to God. From the angle in which you approached it. But let me tell you why it is important that we study the reformers that we are studying now. These reformers in particular, why did they, amen, glory to God, why was there a system that they needed to break the people free from? Why was there a system? Why did they need to advance revelation uh, beyond a certain thing at this moment? Amen. Uh, Minister Antoinette Mays, amen. Go ahead. Because there was corruption in the church as it was, and they weren't really teaching the body, the spiritual, they weren't meeting the spiritual needs of humanity by drawing them closer to G, by turning them to Jesus. They were just making them think, they weren't letting them know about the righteousness. Amen. Making them think they had to buy their way through. And that's not how it was. And they wanted to change it so that the people could see that. 
Amen. I thank you so much. Let me let me say it this way, because all of you are correct. So I'm going to collectively bring everybody together on this thought. Amen. They were liberating the believer from the system of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, you have to understand something about papal Rome and pagan Rome. You have to understand something about the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church was something that was invented and then inserted by Roman leaders, non-believers, non-pagan uh, believers. Amen. Glory to God. In other words, they didn't believe in Jesus Christ. So this is what happened. In, 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 when Jesus rose from the dead, amen, the disciples were unleashed on the earth and they are going about and they're transforming everything. You remember reading in the book of Acts where it says, these are the men that turned the world upside down. Amen. Glory to God. These are the men that turn the world upside down because they are saving people. They are delivering people. They are healing people. They're converting entire territories. Amen. Glory to God into uh, of the faith. Amen. People are coming into the faith of Jesus Christ and operating according to the kingdom. And the Roman Catholic Church couldn't do anything about it. In fact, one of the things that they wanted to do, they wanted to send over, amen, those that were still in Judaism to fight against it to war against it, to stop it. And that's where Saul came into play. Amen. Where well, Saul uh, was one that he studied under Gamaliel, Gamaliel, amen, glory to God, under that guy, amen, glory to God. And as he studied under him, amen, glory to God, he began to go on business trips to find believers and kill them, to kill them. And that's how Stephen got stoned. So now all of this is happening and the Roman uh, government is thinking, we can't stop this from spreading. Because they, they made it illegal, amen, for them to preach Jesus. You can't preach Jesus. You can't, you can't advance the kingdom of God. You can't do the work. So this is where the believers started doing what is called now the catacombs. Those of you that don't know, under the city of Rome, there were catacombs or tunnels. And they were dug out with sticks and posts and, and rocks and everything for them to travel underground. Also, the symbol of Christianity, the fish symbol. That fish symbol. Well, that was a secret symbol of safety and, and restoration and provision. For instance, if you were going down the street and you were a believer and you knew that, I mean, there's nowhere I can go because you can't publicly deny your faith. That's not what we do. We don't deny because we confess him publicly and, and we, we, we refuse to deny. We, we, we will take death before we deny Jesus. I don't know about you all, amen, glory to God, but that's still our stance, amen. We will not deny the lordship of Jesus Christ. So they will be traveling about and they will see over the doorpost of a home, the carving of a fish. And they would, knew then, they would know then that believers live there. And I can go there and let them know that I'm a believer and I can receive help. That's where that whole symbol came from. Amen. Go fishing, in other words. Amen. Go make other disciples. Amen. Glory to God. So what the Roman Catholic Church designed was a corrupt system that looked like the right system. Amen. That had the allure of something so majestic. That's where the robes and the, the, the cross and the, 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 the garment, amen, glory to God, and all of those things that we're so infatuated with because when it comes time for us to be ordained and licensed and everything, there we go dressing like the Roman Catholic Church. Amen. Now, I said that as sweet as I could, y'all. Amen. Glory to God. I can't say it any sweeter than that. Amen. Glory to God. There we go, doing everything we can to go with that. Now, you had people that came up that started, and, and, and that's where you get Protestants from. What is a Protestant? A Protestant is nothing more than a protesting Catholic. So all of you that say, well, I'm a Protestant. Amen. Glory to God. The Protestants were people that were Catholics. Amen. That was protesting. Martin Luther, he never left the Roman Catholic Church. All he did was protest it. Amen. John Huss. Amen. Although they, they, they killed him and when they killed him, they dug him, dug up his bones, burned it, took his ashes and sprinkled it over the Swift River. Amen. Glory to God. But he was nothing more than a protesting Catholic. Amen. Glory to God. So you're, you're, in essence, not a Protestant. Get that out your vocabulary. You're not a protesting Catholic. No, you are a son of God, a citizen of the kingdom of God. And that system was 
was inserted in the church to bring this type of disturbance. And for years, they operated in that system because it looked like you're giving me liberty to come worship Christ when they're saying, no, I'm going to give you liberty to worship Christ, but under our rules. And that began to be passed down with a number of traditions and philosophies to the extent that there needed to be some liberation. And that's when God began to raise up those that will reform the church and the faith of it. Amen. Glory to God. So that's the history of that. And everybody is correct in essence of everything that is said. I collectively brought it all together so that we can understand why it needed to be reformed. And George Fox is considered the liberator of spirit. Now, let's look at the overview really quickly. Many in our generation do not realize that many of the freedoms we enjoy today, there's, there, there's some points missing in your book, but I'm going to read it anyway, that many of the freedoms, that goes in the blank, the word freedom, the many of the freedoms we enjoy today is credited to the ministry and the work of George Fox. Amen. Glory to God. It's credited to the ministry and the work of George Fox. Amen. We, we like to, amen. Glory to God. Pray in the spirit. Amen. Glory to God. And speak in tongues. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Well, listen to me. All of that was lost in the confusion and the misconception, amen, in the contamination of the Roman Catholic Church. This body of Christ, this mighty body of Christ that was birthed in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, that we hear about signs and wonders and shadows healing people, amen, glory to God, and, and handkerchiefs and aprons being sent out and devils being cast out. And at midnight, there was a great earthquake and the prison doors were open, amen, and everybody's veins was loose. All this type of work, amen, glory to God. All these things, amen, glory to God. When the disciples begin to pass, you begin to have spiritual leaders that were being paid by the Roman government. They were being paid by the Roman government to adopt their, their system. You can still believe in Jesus. You can still do this, but you got to teach it according to how we tell you. Am I making sense in here tonight? Amen. So they began to pass on different philosophies that didn't come from the word of God. I had one of our uh, um, evangelists, amen, glory to God. In fact, amen, glory to God. Um, her brother is on the uh, line now. Amen. Glory to God. He's in the class. Kenyon Johnson. Amen. Glory to God. His sister Diamond. Amen. Glory to God. Went over on a mission trip over into Rome. Amen. And she went up into the hills. Amen. Of the surrounding areas and began to witness to people with a mission group. Amen. And she came back and gave us a debriefing of what was going on. And she said one of the things that she found that was most um, alarming that when she got over there, well, there are very few people that actually read their Bible. And they are also, amen, glory to God, they are encouraged not to read it, but to trust the voice of the priest. That system came from the Roman Catholic Church. Amen. That system came from that. Amen. Glory to God. Don't. Now, what happens when I don't read scripture? I don't know for myself, so I got to listen to you. Ignorance is Satan's greatest weapon. Remember that from your bachelor's program. It is Satan's greatest weapon. Whatever you don't know will be used against you. Amen. Glory to God. So now, now George Fox bring in his ministry a certain level of freedoms. Amen. We like, amen, glory to God, to see the sick healed. Amen. Glory to God. Laying hands on the sick, using anointing oil. Well, all of that was lost in the misconception in the installation of the Roman Catholic system. Glory to God. When they started installing popes and archbishops and bishops and, and priests, amen, glory to God, they had an agenda that didn't go with the agenda of God. And I don't want you to think that it's just the Roman Catholics, amen, glory to God. Even some of the denominations that we are attached to still have some of these practices in place. Oh, glory to God. Dude, don't, don't look at me like that, class. Amen. Glory. Because I'm going to teach it anyway. Amen. Glory to God. Your doctorate students now. Amen. Glory to God. What you going to do? Get mad at me and not come next year? Amen. Glory to God. Your doctorate students now. Amen. I'm going to teach it anyway. Amen. Glory to God. Even some of those denominations still have those practices. Still have some of those things that came as an infectious 
misconception, traditions of men, ideology of men, amen, and philosophies of men that have been spoiling the church of his life, vibrancy, and strength, amen, glory to God, was handed down from the Roman Catholic Church. So even when a protesting Catholic, a Protestant broke free, they kept some of those rituals, some of those uh, 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 attire, some of those verbiage, amen, some of those things. Am I making sense to y'all tonight, class? Amen. Glory to God. So George Fox, he was the one that that up until this point, amen, glory to God, you had Martin Luther show up and they was ready to kill him. And all he said was, well, we receive justification by faith in Christ alone. <laughs> we all preach that every day in our church. In our church, am I right, Dr. Dixon? We preach that, that faith in Jesus Christ alone is enough to get you saved and, 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 and to bring you into this kingdom of God. You don't need nothing else. You need this. Amen. Glory to God. And, and that, that's what we, we teach. Amen. Glory to God. We teach that. Well, they wanted to kill him for that. Why? It was breaking them free from the beast of the system. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Don't look at me like that, son. Yamo. So I'm going to keep teaching it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's important we understand this history because we don't know how we have an assignment to advance the body of Christ back into an operation that was handed to us by Jesus Christ himself. It got infected. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And we're going to do our part. Amen. Glory to God to liberate. So now as we continue to go forward, amen. George Fox was the one um, um, uh, um, that that not only, because up until this point, they only believed in justification in Christ. Amen. And believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior and read the scripture. Up until this point, that's all they believed in. They didn't believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost yet. They didn't have a revelation of it. They didn't believe in the laying hands on hand, laying hand, laying on of hands to heal the sick. They didn't have a revelation of it. They didn't believe, glory to God, amen, of speaking in tongues. They didn't have a revelation of it. They didn't believe, amen, glory to God, amen, in loving outside of their own race glory to god y'all quiet now amen glory to god they didn't have revelation on this stuff amen because when you're in ignorance you'll believe anything the enemy can really play with your mind when you're in ignorance are y'all hearing me right now amen glory to god and this is why hbi is important because we teach true unadulterated truth from the word of God with no affiliation of any religious denomination of any particular doctrine. Amen. Glory to God. We only give you what the scriptures say. And this is why it's important because we are not a part of any system that did not come from God. The only system Amen. we are part of is the kingdom of God. That's it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And I'm going to teach it anyway. I'm going to teach it anyway. So let's go a little bit further. Number two, when his name is mentioned, many rightfully acknowledge that Fox was the founder, that goes in that blank, that word founder, the founder of the Quakers, also known as, or the Society of Friends. Amen. Glory to God. The Quakers or the Society of Friends. All of you know George Fox. You know George Fox. Amen. Glory to God. At least you have an image of what he might look like, George Fox. Amen. Glory mm -hmm. to God. I'm going to tell you how you know him. How many of you have eaten Quaker Oaks before? The oatmeal. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Quaker Oaks. Amen. Glory to God. The oatmeal. All right. The man's face on the Quaker Oak box. Amen. Is a resemblance of what George Fox looked like. That's why it's called Quaker Oaks. The gathering of believers were called the Quakers, one that would shake the earth with the message of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Amen. Y'all just got some good history right there. Amen. Glory to God. This is some good stuff, everybody. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So now the Quaker Oaks box, you know who he looks like now. Amen. Glory to God. And you're going to realize, I'm going to tell you how many different ministries came forth from George Fox by the end of this class. George Fox was so extreme in his efforts to further the gospel that over 200 years later, the Salvation Army, founded by William Booth, was greatly influenced. That goes in that blank. The word influenced was greatly influenced. Amen. Glory to God. By Fox ministry was greatly influenced by Fox ministry. All right. Let me tell you, the Salvation Army was not just a regular group of people. 
they not dr nina it was a man the salvation army was actually a group that would go into areas and territories on a mission trip a man and send over 300 people to a territory to transform that territory to be a territory that would believe in jesus christ they did more than recycle clothes and sell them back to you amen glory to god no they were actually going i didn't mean to say it like that for the salvation army but they they, they were actually they were dressed like a military. They was actually God's army in the earth. The Salvation Army. Amen. Glory to God. And they were not timid. Now, listen, it's 200 years later, and William Booth is inspired by the ministry of George Fox, which brings me to this thought. Amen. Glory to God. As I was studying this, I was, I was thinking about this. Amen. Glory to God. I was thinking about this, that we ought to live in such a manner that we influence others that come behind us. They should have creative ideas that show up in their minds by watching our commitment to the vision that we receive from God. Are you so committed to the vision that you got from God that it inspired other people to have creative ideas as well? Or are you casually, haphazardly, with apathy, amen, glory to God, just going about your way and doing your thing, amen, glory to God, is saying, all right, I halfway do this thing that God called me to do. No, it should be a burning desire in your heart. You should do it with such passion, such desire, amen, glory, such intensity, amen, that it inspire the other people, amen, glory to God, that are watching you, that it spring up, an idea spring up in their mind, that they go back and they hear about the ministry of God in your life. You are called to affect nations. They have over 6 billion people on the planet. And there you are being content with reaching just one person. No, I know what the scriptures say. Angels in heaven rejoice over that one person. Well, you ought to get the angels rejoicing over that one and go after another one. And then another one. And then another one. Amen. You ought to have heaven looking like a pep rally when you're done. Amen. Glory to God. Just going after souls. Amen. Going after. Amen. Bring them in and build them up. Amen. The ones that have been brought in have to be taught up now. And the ones that are not in have to be brought in. Amen. Those are the only two roads to ministry. There are no other roads to ministry. Bring them in and build them up. If you're not doing one of those, amen, glory to God, you're not in ministry. If you're not bringing them in and building them up, you don't call yourself a church. Don't call yourself a ministry. Call yourself a 4-H club or something, amen, a fraternity or something. Don't call yourself a church if you're not bringing them in and building them up, amen, glory to God. Those are the only two roles right there. And oftentimes what we want to do, we want to preach a bring them in message to people that are already in. Because we don't know how to build up people once we get them in. So we keep telling them how to get in when they've been in for the past seven years. Glory to God. Y'all got y'all got to listen to me now. Amen. Glory to God. Well, you ain't got to listen to me. Amen. Glory to God. But you got to hear me if you're going to be in class tonight. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch, watch point number four. Fox was born in 1624. Go ahead and fill that in your blank. I got to move faster than what I'm doing. Fox was born in 1624 to Christopher and Mary Fox in Leicestershire, England. Number five. Fox grew up a very religious Presbyterian that goes in the blank. Amen. Number five, religious, a very religious Presbyterian. Amen. Glory to God. Fox was unlike any of the children around him. He never played the games that the children played, nor did he take part in the jokes and the pranks. He was very different. Fox would sit in the corner and he would think. Even as a small boy, he operated with a great level of discernment. He had a very focused demeanor about himself. This brings me to something, amen, glory to God, that as parents, his parents were very religious, amen, glory to God, Presbyterian people, amen, glory to God. But as his parents, as parents, what we must do, we must discern, discern amen, because he didn't get that very serious demeanor on his own. There was a God deposited thing, glory to God. And as parents, we must discern the God deposited uniqueness about our children and then nurture that thing for instance amen glory to god i have my granddaughter zoe 
Amen. Glory to God. And my granddaughter Zoe, I was asleep and the Lord gave me, amen, glory to God, a meaning for her name, Zoe. We know it means life. Amen. Glory to God. It's the Greek word life, but it means so much more than that because I understand the principle of being able to endorse and pronounce over your child. Amen. Glory to God. So I called my daughter and I asked, I said, is it okay if I give, uh, if I, if I establish the meaning for Zoe's name, the Lord gave me a word for her. Amen. And she says, yes, it is. Now she's not born or anything. She's just yet in my daughter's stomach. But I told her, amen, the Lord told me, amen, glory to God, that her name means the sword bearer and the life giver. That's what the Lord told me. The sword bearer and the life giver, amen. And to this day, amen, she's over a little bit over a year. And boy, she's as feisty as she can be. Amen. She's at daycare. The daycare teacher telling us that the baby going all in other baby's mouth and taking the food out their mouth. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Because she's a sword bearer. So what do I do as a parent? I nurture that. I don't I don't I don't try to stump that out of her. I don't try to wipe it out of her. Amen. I, I now begin to teach her how to fight in the spirit, amen, glory to God, because she's a fighter by nature, she's a defender by nature, she's a nurturer by nature, amen, glory to God, and she's aggressive by nature, so we have to watch that about our children when they're quiet, amen, and they're peaceful, where they may be intercessors, they may be someone, amen, glory to God, that are in that are that that are inwardly interceding for others, amen, glory to God, but we don't know that, so we just think, amen, glory to God, they just shy, no, they're more than shy. Amen. There's a gift, a God-deposited thing in them, and we have to pay attention to that. Let's go to the second bullet point. Fox didn't fit into the society. He really didn't care much for it. At age 11, he had his first encounter with what he repeatedly referenced as, as what turned on in the inner light of Jesus Christ. He then learned to walk in purity and the mystery of surrounding evils. During his young age, some people say it was about 12 years old or so, amen, some theologians say that, 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 that around his age, he made a set of rules that served as the resolutions by which to conduct himself. At 12 years old or so, this is what he said, Dr. Earl Bell. He said this, he will live a, this is resolution. At 12 or 13 years old, I will live a, 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 a pure righteous life. I don't know about y'all, but at 12, I wasn't thinking about that. Amen. Not at 12. Amen. Glory to God. He said he would be faithful in all things inwardly to God and outwardly to man. He would resolve to always keep his word. He would not commit excess in eating or drinking. What he was doing was he was resolving at a young age to be a man of integrity, discipline, and in and, 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 and holiness. We have grown men that can that, that can learn from this boy, amen, right now, to, to resolve within yourself to be a man of integrity and discipline. Who glory to God. And we have grown women that can learn from it as well. Y'all, y'all, boy, I'm telling you, amen, glory to God. Y'all looking at me, amen, glory to God, amen. You hear me, Dr. Gray? Amen. At a young age, he's taken flight into the assignment of God. Let's go into the next, uh, number six. In the late summer of 1643, Fox was at market representing his employer when he ran into a cousin and his friend. This would be the moment that would change his life. Put that in your blank, the word change. Amen. This would be the moment that he would change his life. Bullet point number one. The weather was hot and he was thirsty. Amen. And they were thrilled at the opportunity to see his cousin and to talk with the young man. He went into a tavern where his cousin suggested that they go play a game to see who could drink the most beer. The first to stop drinking had to pay for all the rounds. Fox was furious to see that Christians given to self-indulgence when they were supposedly to be against it. Just a few weeks after that event, Fox began pursuing his call to ministry. Frustrated with the spiritual inconsistencies he saw around him, he broke off his relationship and left home wandering the countryside in search of a companionship with someone that, that wanted to live pure like him and his search for answers to his questions. In other words, this call to righteous living, what, 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 what Fox experienced then when he got upset, he experienced what was called a righteous indignation. Amen. That he didn't like to see people not taking this serious. It frustrates me as well when believers, amen, glory to God, carry a Bible and won't read it. Amen. 
when we say we're just going to do whatever we want to do and live however we want to live, when God has given us so much to be able to live in victory, and I'm not trying to bring you under any umbrella of condemnation, amen, but it's a righteous indignation. If something really bothers you, because this really bothered George Fox, and notice what happened after that, he went into ministry, and he began to teach the people how to live in discipline. Let me say it this way. If something really bothers you, it only bothers you like that because you are called to do something about it. If you go into a place and you see disorganization and you don't see any order and that really frustrates you, that ruffles your feather, that's your pet peeve. No, oftentimes you can find your avenue of assignment, your lane to deal with something. All you got to do is look at your pet peeve. Amen. It really frustrates me when people don't keep their word. Amen. Well, you might be somebody that learned to teach people about integrity. Amen. Glory to God. And to represent other people. Amen. Glory to God. In business and ministry. Amen. Well, I don't like to see disorganization and, and lack of order. Amen. Glory to God. It just looked like chaos right here. Amen. Glory to God. Well, you might be somebody that has the gift of administration on you. Amen. To bring order to that place. Amen. Glory to God. You might say, well, there are no creative ideas breaking forth in this place. I don't like being stagnant. Well, you might be a visionary. Amen. Glory to God. Or you might not like, amen, glory to God, when people stir up mess. Amen. Well, you might be a defender of prophetic mysteries. You can find your lane of operation and run in your lane. All you got to do is look at your pet peeve. What did God put in you to stir you up to make you frustrated? Hallelujah. Amen. Because your frustration can fuel your faith. If you hate to see people, amen, glory to God, amen, Pastor Angela, and I'm talking to you now, amen, if you hate to see people suffer in poverty and be broke with a broke mindset, amen, and not live their best life, then you may have the assignment. That's where must see financial, amen, services come from, amen, glory to God, to, pro to provide solutions for that poverty issue. Well, if it frustrates you, amen, it might be the call. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. This is good. Amen. He traveled to the Midlands. We're in bullet point number three. He traveled to the Midlands heading towards London, but he was grieved within himself, wrestling daily with his, with his dissatisfaction and unanswered questions. He protected his heart so much that he would have little to do with anyone at all. He avoided all people. Never let people frustrate you to the extent that it make you leave people. Amen. That was a mistake he made. Never let people frustrate you to the extent that it make you leave people. Amen. Glory to God. Watch this next bullet point. He would meet with minister after minister only to find out that all ministers he encountered with did not seek the Lord wholeheartedly an expression of holiness and did not have answers nor desires to his question. And that troubled him. He had questions and they didn't care nothing about. It. They would tell him stuff like, man, don't worry about that. Why are you asking that question? That's how I knew I was the teacher of the word. Because I would do this thing that I now call twisting the cube. I would look at every angle of it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Dr. Lisa Allen, I would just sit there and twist the thing. Well, hold up. If this meant this, then, then this, this also means this. And uh, All right. Well, if that said that, then what the, amen. Glory to God. And God will reveal mission. And I will ask questions. And people will say, I don't know. Amen. Glory. Well, I don't know. It's not a good answer for me. I'm not satisfied. This is going to keep me up at night. And when I say that I'm going to stay up thinking about this, allowing the Holy Ghost to reveal it to me, amen, glory to God, is because I'm pressing into the mysteries of the kingdom of God. I'm pressing into the mysteries. Amen. You just got to want this bad enough. And this is what kingdom history is designed to do. It's designed to spur you on to make you think, well, hold up. I need to be doing more. I need to be doing more. Amen. Let's go into the life, uh, the, the life of ministry for George Fox. Number seven. In 1644, Fox returned home still frustrated and without answers. Put that in your blank. Frustrated. Fox returned home still frustrated and without answers. 
During these times of searching for friends who were committed to the Lord, Fox began to understand what appeared to be new revelation in that day. In fact, these pivotal foundational stones that were revealed to him became the primary beliefs that eventually launched the, the formation of the Quakers and also serves as the foundational stone for many Pentecostal and Methodist denominations. He did not have anybody that wanted to go with him, and it began to lead him to a place to birth something. This is how I knew that there was an apostolic assignment on my life, that much of my frustration, I didn't have a lot of answers for, and I didn't care how many books I read, how many people I talked to, I didn't get the answers I needed. And God was saying that I am using you to be a trailblazer. You're looking for a path that has already been trodden. I'm using you to prepare a trail for the next generation so that they can begin to journey into areas that have not been trodden. We are in love with what we already know. And that's all we love. We don't have any hunger to grow in this. We don't have any hunger to seek God and say, God, reveal more. And in every generation, God is looking to unveil more to his body. Glory to God. Give me a quick second. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There we are. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I had to run over there real quick and grab this. Amen. Glory to God. I remember when I got this Rubik's Cube. Y'all remember these things right here? This Rubik's Cube. My wife got this for me. Amen. Glory to God. Um, I was celebrating. It was about five years ago. I was celebrating 20 years of ministry. And it's a unique gift. Amen. Glory to God for somebody 20 years in ministry. Amen. So I remember sitting in my office and I'm sitting there playing with it. And as I'm playing with it, I got all one side white. Amen. Glory to God. And I got excited. I turned it to my wife. I said, baby, look, I got one side of it white. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And this is what he said. Now turn it around. I turned it around and it was still jumbled up with the different colors. It was still mixed up. And the Holy Spirit said, that's how I am. It took you 20 years to just understand one side of me. I am many-sided. It's the manifold wisdom of God. You think you know a scripture, turn it around and look at it from a different angle. And now the scripture opens up even more. And we don't have many people that hunger after this like that. We don't have many people that saying, God, I want you to reveal more. I want to know you more. I don't want to just know you. I don't just want to know you resurrected. This is what Paul said. I want to know you and the power of your resurrection. I want to get to know the power that got you up. Hallelujah. That's the Holy Ghost. So you got to understand, there are not going to be a lot of people, amen, glory to God, that are going to walk with you on this, amen, glory to God. When you begin to launch out into a to an area of excellence, I have a new book that is out, amen, glory to God. This book is a book of quotes, amen, glory to God. That's all it is, a daily quote to inspire the leader in you. It's called Mental Modulation, amen. You can go on Amazon. The book is, I got the book at the bare minimum of what the publisher would allow me to put it at. I think it's like $3. Amen. A good book with like 300 and something days of quotes or 200 and something days of quotes. Amen. Glory to God. And the quote for today was this. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to read it for you. Amen. Most people run a limited program in their mind. It causes all potential within them to be subject to those same limits. The program is called mediocrity. To break free from this program, you must reprogram yourself through intentional actions. Amen. We never saw that mediocrity was a program. Excellence is also a program. Glory to God. That produces results. Amen. Glory to God. That produces, amen, glory to God, success. So now the high call of God, this is why it's important for you to take the path of excellence. The high call of God is a path that is not traveled by many. It's not traveled by many. If you're looking to be average and ordinary, it's crowded down there. Take the high path and you're going to find out that there's a lot of room and space for you to maneuver. Amen. Because many don't, many don't climb to the place, amen, or ascend to the place of excellency. Amen. Glory to God. The high call of God is a path that is not traveled by many. Few have the hunger and the drive and the commitment to walk in a lifestyle like this. So if you're looking for friends, 
Amen. You're not going to have a bunch of them once you start continue to grow and soar. Amen. If you're one of those people where you get mad at people because they hadn't called you, I don't have friends like that. One of my best friends, amen, glory to God, is also, amen, glory to God, lead instructor of HBI, amen, Dr. Keith Reshort. I believe he's online. I thought I saw him. Amen. He's one of my best friends. Amen. We don't talk every day. We might not talk every week. But when we do talk, we pick up where we left off at. Amen. Because we both understand that we are on assignment and we're doing things. And that's what I need. I need friends that are producing. Y'all quiet right there. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to talk to you. Amen. Glory to God. I need friends that are going to spark a fire in me and influence me. Amen. Glory to God. Inspire me. Amen. Glory to God. Friends that we can glean from. Friends that I look out across and I see them working and I'm working. And then when we both come up for air, amen, we can go get breakfast or lunch or something then. Amen. Glory to God. But I don't need, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not 17 years old where I need somebody to come see me every day, somebody to call me and like my every post. I don't need that. Amen. Glory to God. I'm on a Glory. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody was saying something? If they ain't going to talk to you, Bishop, I'm going to talk to you. Hallelujah. I thought you were on here too. Amen. <laughs> That's my friend, everybody. Amen. Glory to God. And I didn't just say that lightly. I actually asked him, can I call you friend? Amen. Mm -hmm. I asked people that. Amen. Glory to God. Because I need you to understand the covenant that comes with this. Amen. I need you to understand that I'm all in. I'm ready to fight in your absence behind you. Amen. Glory to God. That's friendship. Amen. Glory. In your absence, because some people be ready to fight in your presence because they just want to look like they love you. Amen. Mm. No, I'm not going to let nobody talk about you in your absence. Amen. Glory to God, because we're in covenant. And this is important. You need to, amen. Glory to God. You need to understand you're not going to have many friends. Your need to be accepted can become a snare for compromising. Quit being thirsty. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God for so much. Now we're in point number eight. My time, I can't believe I got 10 minutes. How did this happen? How did this happen? And I'm not nowhere near. All right, y'all, let's close out. That's, how, that's what I get for being away from y'all for so long. Amen. Number eight, the revelations of George Fox would change the world. Put that in the blank, the word world. Put that in the blank. The first revelation was understanding the new birth. Put that in the blank. That's the first revelation. Up until this point, amen, glory to God, all the revelation was about Christ and it never really applied to you. It was just really about who Jesus was and it was enough to get you saved. And then uh, Martin Luther came and asked his questions and, and, and brought out revelation about how important it is for you to read the word of God and justification is in Christ and faith in Christ alone. And then John Calvin came along and said, well, hold up, we're supposed to live holy as well. And then after that, amen, glory to God, you had John Wycliffe that says, hold up, Prayer, spending time in the presence of God can produce great things. Amen. Glory to God. And then, amen, you had Lutherans birthed from Martin Luther. You had Methodists birthed from John Wesley. Amen. Glory to God. You had Calvinists birthed from John Calvin. And God wasn't intending for you to camp around revelation from a particular vessel. Yes, we honor the vessel. We honor the revelation, but we don't worship neither one of them. Amen. Because it's designed to be a foundation for the next generation to build on. What Johnny Young is teaching at HBI, Kelsey would take it to the next level. Others would take it to the next level. My ceiling would be your floor. Amen. Glory to God. Because God has so much more to reveal to his body. Y'all got to hear me in this. Amen. Glory to God. In spite of what was being taught in the church at the time, Fox realized that one can only become a Christian if he had converted from within that Jesus Christ gave that person eternal life or the very nature of God. George Fox was the first one to show up and start teaching that, and they will put him out of churches for it. To teach that you have eternal life, which is the very nature of God. And they will say, get out of our church with that. We don't have the nature of God. Because the system was corrupt. The infection has spread throughout the church. So number, bullet point number two, the second revelation that he received was directly connected with the new birth. All authority, put that in your blank, the word authority, all authority came from God. One cannot make himself a minister. Neither was education from any college enough to make a man a minister. Amen. And this is what George Fox had an issue with cemeteries. I mean, seminaries. Amen. Glory to God. He had that, amen, glory to God, because you can't make somebody a preacher. You can't make them a minister of the mysteries of the steward of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. God, the only one that can do that. You can help develop them. You can help refine it, amen, but you can't deposit that. 
glory to God. Hallelujah. This is good stuff tonight. Amen. This, this was important because this would be a blow against organized religion, especially the Roman Catholic Church. Because they put people in position, whoever they wanted, that will follow their leadership. Whoever will do what they want them to do, the government I'm talking about, you can become a priest, a pope, amen. You can even become an archbishop, amen, an archbishop or even a pope, amen, glory to God, if you are working in conjunction with the assignment. Amen. Of the of the Roman Catholic government. I mean, the Roman government. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go into it. The third revelation was God's temple. God's temple. We got five minutes. We got to roll. God's temple consisted of flesh and blood believers, not a special material structure. Now, this was really this caused problems for the Roman Catholic Church, because anytime they wanted more money to build something more beautiful, they would just begin to charge people more to forgive them for their sins. And George Fox show up and said, well, hold up. That building is not more valuable than you because you're the actual body of Christ, the temple of the living God. This revelation would mean that, that God will live in man eternally working and fellowshipping with him. This caused us to see ourselves as God's partner in the earth. We are partner with, partners with God. Come on, say I'm God's partner in the earth. There you go. Amen. You got to confess that out of your mouth. The fourth revelation was this. The Lord would teach his people himself. Amen. Listen to this statement. Fox, put the word teach in the blank. Amen. This is what Fox said. Fox was ushering in the ministry of the Holy Spirit to the dry church that used the word of God only without the spirit, creating a self-righteous letter of the law mentality. Fox realized that one must depend on the illumination of the Holy Spirit, not merely on the written sentences in the Bible. Amen. The, the written word is the logos. Amen. Glory to God. The spoken word is the rhema from the spirit of God. God wants to speak to your heart about the written word. Revelation. Glory to God. The body of Christ does not progress in any area. We do not progress in thought. We do not progress in action. We do not progress in identity or operation without revelation. So when George Fox showed up, he began to teach the people to shift their focus, amen, to be able to hear from the spirit. That is so important that the believer learn to hear from the Holy Ghost themselves. Any ministry you are at that don't teach you how to hear from God, that only wants you to hear from them, amen, are still operating in the system of the Roman Catholic or the beast. Amen. Glory to God. That's not it. Amen. Glory. God doesn't want you to operate in that system to where you, you have, you need a mediator in a man or one. Yes. He'll use a man or woman of God to teach you. I'm not saying that, but that man or woman of God are only supposed to be teaching you up to a place where you can start hearing God throughout the day. I'm going to raise my hand with that. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all don't have to say amen. I'm going to go ahead and say amen. If we're not teaching our people up to that place, Dr. Haney, Dr. 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 Earl Bell, uh, Pastor Angela, if we're not teaching them up to be able to discern the voice of God and get revelation and apply revelation themselves, amen, glory to God, then we're missing the whole thing that we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be leading them to a spirit-led life. Not to worship us, amen, glory to God. Not to esteem us, not for us to be so insecure that we need our title and for you to honor our title, amen, and acknowledge us and hear from us only. Glory to God. Well, we got quiet then. I guess we'll go to number nine. I move fast. George Fox was aggressive and courageous. Feel that in your blank. Aggressive and courageous. He believed in being filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues something that was completely unheard of in the life of other reformers. No other reformer showed up. Now, remember, they had this on the day of Pentecost. The early church had it. But the Roman government began to infiltrate the church because they couldn't stop it and said, if we can't stop them, let's join them and say, hey, we'll allow you to worship. You don't have to hide on the ground anymore. You just have to come do it in these temples that we build up. And we have some priests that are even ready to teach you about it so you can grow in it. Amen. And they began to infect us with all type of misconceptions and ideologies. Amen. So all of that was lost in translation. All of that. It did. And so now George Fox is showing back up and, and he starts Rashiki Ma side by Rabbi Keshima. Can you imagine you're the only person that anybody has ever heard speaking tongues? Ever. 
generations have gone by and people are looking around and saying, what is this guy doing? Can you imagine the pressure that the enemy would try to do in your mind, put on your mind to say, you're going to look crazy doing this? I wish I had some doctors in this class that would go ahead and fix their minds up and say, I'm going to look crazy. Now, remember I said there are even some denominations that you might even be a part of that still live by some of these amen practices. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. They have some that won't even, they don't want you to speak in tongues, not, not publicly and not out loud. Amen. Well, I dare you, amen, to allow the Holy Ghost to lead you. And if he leads you to do it right then, do it right then. Because you cannot pave way for the spirit of God to come in if you're going to be in, if you're going to be under the control of how you look to people. This is not a social ministry. It's a saving ministry. Hallelujah. We have to advance the body of Christ. Fox would enter into a church service and this is what he would do. Amen. Now this was bold. Amen. Glory to God. I'm not telling you to be this bold, but this is how bold he was. Fox would enter a church service, interrupt the church service, and confront the doctrine of the misled preacher. He'll come in as a visitor and then walk in. I got something I need to say and interrupt the preacher and then say, I tell you what, we ain't going to talk about that foolishness right there. Amen. Glory. Now, I've done some things just as bold, but it is it, by the leading of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm not going to go into some of those stories. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But amen. My time is up. But amen. It's it, it, it by the leading of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Watch this next part. One Jesuit priest into encounter Fox as the priest talked. Amen. First of all, the preachers in that area were scared on Sunday morning or Saturday morning. Amen. Glory to God. They were scared to preach. Because they were scared Fox was going to show up and challenge their doctrine and then start going to different scriptures about what they were preaching. Amen. One Jesuit priest in, in counter Fox as the priest taught and that the bread and the wine are actually transformed into the actual body of Jesus Christ during the communion. And as, as he, the chosen priest, was to serve the people. Fox burst through the doors and challenged the priest saying, then divide the bread in half and let's see which one becomes molded then. Amen. In 1652, Fox interrupted a service to confront a priest, and the priest ran up and hit Fox in the face with his Bible. Blood gushed from his nose in such a way that it splattered all on the walls, and he was then punched with books and sticks and fists and thrown over a hedge. The priest was afraid of having his hand cut off by the authorities for hitting Fox, but Fox met him privately, and he forgave him. Amen. Glory to God. I have that in this book right here. Amen. Glory to God. That story in this book. Amen. It said that Fox not only forgave him, began to show, sit down and show him the scriptures of where he was in error. Amen. Glory to God. Got punched in the face, jumped on, beat up, and then said, I tell you what, I forgive you. Amen. Glory to God. Hold that ice pack. Let me find this scripture right quick. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I'm telling you, amen. Glory to God. I like this guy. I like this guy. He was bold. Amen. Glory to God. He wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't timid. Fox was put in jail for everything from refusing to take his hat off to refusing to take an oath. It was clear that the government hated these Quakers. This did not detour Fox. He remained steadfast while being in prison on uncountable occasions. Number 10, the foundational message of Fox ministry was every believer could and should walk in spiritual authority and power given to him. Put that in your blank spiritual and power spiritual authority and power given to him and fox life demonstrated this message fox was really the reformer out of all the reformers he was really the one that pulled the body of christ from under the influence of the roman catholic church everybody else was still protestant or protesting catholics that's what protestant mean protesting amen that's what they were amen so he was the one to really pull them from under their influence as much as we can see now. Let's go into this. This is what he believed. He didn't just believe that Jesus Christ saved, Jesus Christ did this. He believed that we had authority as well. One man in particular had been suffering from acute arthritis and neuritis in his hand. So many doc so he so so many doctors that he could not heal them. He made his way to Fox and Fox laid hands on him and showed the laid hands on the man and, and showed the power of God and the man was instantly healed. Fox's mother was healed of being paralyzed from a stroke as he took it, 
as she took he took her by the hand one day and a paralysis left her. There are unaccountable occasions where Fox would pray for the sick, healing them of all their diseases as he believed that there were signs to accompany the gospel. First Corinthians 4 and 20 says this here, amen, that the message we preach ought to be with power and demonstration. There has to be a demonstration of the power. Do not settle with being a minister that preach in theory only. There has to be a practice of the power as well. Glory to God. It was a common thing for Fox to wage spiritual warfare, casting down dark spirits in the spiritual realm. He would take authority over the atmosphere. This kind of teaching was unheard in his day. Spiritual warfare was taught to him by the Holy Ghost and no one else. It was taught to him by the Holy Ghost and no one else. He didn't read it in a book. He didn't come to HBI. He was praying in the Holy Ghost and getting revelation that nobody else got. I want to challenge you to increase your time of praying in this, your heavenly language. Sometimes people ask me, say, where do you get some of this revelation from that you get? It's been in the scripture the whole time, but I never saw it. I say this, I pray in the Holy Ghost a lot. Praying in the Holy Ghost, amen, the Bible said that when he speaketh in an unknown tongue, he speaketh mysteries. You're literally downloading revelation when you are praying. Amen. Your mind don't even know what you're downloading yet. Glory to God. But you're downloading revelation. Glory to God. And as you download revelation, see, most people, amen, I want you to reach out and do that. I just want you to reach out and grab what, grab, grab, grab right there. Amen. Did you feel it? Amen. Glory to God. No, you didn't feel anything, did you? But it's there. Can I tell you what's there? All type of radio waves, all type of internet signals, all type of electromagnetic waves are right there in front of you and you can't even grab it, can't feel it. Well, what do I need to tap into the signal? I need a router and a motor. If I get a router and a motor, I can access the signal that's right there in front of me the whole time. You have revelation that's out there. Shikaba, Shabisi Kima, Reshiba, Sakaishia. Amen. Glory to God. When you are doing that, you are literally, amen. Glory to God. So you waiting on a feeling to come over you to start praying in tongues and to speak in your heavenly language. Amen. I wake up in the morning where I feel tired and don't want to get up and go get on my face before God. Amen. And pray in my understanding and in an unknown language. And I find myself, you know, when I'm there for hours, when I don't know nothing, I just say it. I was on my way to uh, uh, Walla, Texas, amen, uh, two weeks ago. I was on my way to Houston, Texas outside of Houston, Texas, Walla, Texas. And I, I leave Baton Rouge and I'm at Lake Charles, I mean, I'm at Lafayette, which is about 45 minutes, 50 minutes or so. Amen, glory to God. So I still have another three hours before I get to Houston. And the Holy Ghost tells me this. He says, pray in, pray in your heavenly, pray in tongues is what he said. So I began to just pray in the spirit and I put on some prophetic worship. Amen, glory to God. And before I know it, I'm in Lake Charles now. So you know, that's an hour from Lafayette to Lake Charles. So I'm in Lake Charles now, and I'm still praying in the spirit. And I'm heavily consumed with this assignment of praying in the spirit. So my wife is over there praying in the spirit with me. We keep going. We make it to Beaumont. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. So now we're another hour into the ride. With two hours into the ride, we hadn't stopped praying in the spirit at all. Amen. Glory to God. Now we make it to Houston, Texas, and we're still at Baytown, and we're still praying in the spirit. We get out, get gas, go into Bucky's. We're buying things and we hadn't stopped praying in the spirit. We're, we're checking out at the line, at the register, and we're still praying in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit won't let us stop. We get to Walla, Texas. We're still praying in the spirit. We're getting dressed for the service that night. We, we, we get to the service. We're there before majority of the people show up for the service. And we, we're there for the whole week, of course. And we're praying in the spirit. And this is the town. Amen. Glory to God. And this particular ministry is on the head, was on the heavy religious influence. So the whole first night, amen. My wife ministered that night. Amen. Glory to God. We're praying in the spirit. But it was heavy pressure and demonic activity. It felt like it was pressing against our chest. Amen. 
And we just kept praying in the spirit the whole time. That night we went back, we prayed out, prayed in the spirit till we went to sleep. We woke up the next morning, the spirit of God told us to pray in the spirit. Now here we are. We're almost an entire 24 hours praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God at this type of intensity. We do it until the night service. And then when she was ministering, something broke in the atmosphere. Glory to God. There was religious spirits that was over that region that was working against the assignment of God. And that night, something happened. And I never saw this before. An entire ministry from the pastor to all the ministers and everybody else came up to the altar. And I looked at everybody. The church was empty in the seats. And I said, everybody came up. And the pastor said, I am repenting for not walking in my kingdom assignment and my potential. And the, all the, everybody else started saying, I'm repenting too. And they said, tonight we are severing ties with religion. We are no longer a part of any religious affiliation. We will now follow the message of the kingdom. And after that, I told you something broke in the atmosphere. What was the Holy Spirit doing? He was having us to war in the spirit. He was having us to download information and revelation to operate with. For the spirit make intercession for the saints according to the will of God, which groanings, which cannot be uttered. I'm going to close out with number 11. George Fox sailed to America. He sailed to America after much persecution. Put that in your blank. America, I know we over time. He led the Quaker movement in America, which was the largest religious movement in America at that time. I told you to go back and look at the Quaker Oaks box. <coughs> Excuse me. That was a picture of George Fox. Amen. Or what was said to be George Fox. The Quakers, that was their, that was their form of revenue. Amen. That's why it was called Quaker Oaks. They who have come to shake the earth. All right. So watch this. Fox would lead the Quakers to be the largest supporters of Native American Indians. When they were robbing and stealing and killing Indians by the, by the villages, the Quakers were the ones standing up and saying, we shouldn't do this, don't do this. And they were trying to defend the Indians. Oh, my God. This is at the introduction of America now, in the early stages of, 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 of us developing colonies and things of that nature. Watch this. He would also lead the Quakers as early as 1688, listen to this, to gather in a formal protest against slavery to the, to, in Philadelphia, yearly, to the Philadelphia yearly meeting in America. This was approximately 174 years before the Emancipation Proclamation. You already had a group of spirit-filled, tongue-talking, fire-walking, amen, fire, amen, glory to God, fire-bred believers that are standing up saying we shouldn't do this to Native Americans and we should release, amen, glory to God, these Africans that we have brought over here and made them slaves. They protested against the government and some of them were beaten and some of them were put in jail. In 1962, Fox was in prison nine times at the, in the span, not expand, in the span of one year. In prison with no food or clothing, Fox refused to pardon, knowing that he had done no evil. He wanted the government to repent. They, wanted, they kept him in prison. They said, you can come on out. He said, I'm not leaving until the government repent. <laughs> Glory to God. William Penn, the famous Quaker leader who founded Pennsylvania, used his influence to get Fox released. Fox would now serve as a notable leader of the Quakers while others would now be in prison spiritually because Fox, Fox, because Fox could no longer confront religion because of his declining health. On January the 13th, 1691, Fox shut his eyes, closed his mouth, took his last breath. Breath. He was 66 years old. Fox did what the early apostles did and the revivalists later did the same. He revived the combination of the spirit and the word and in doing so, crossed Calvinistic and religious mindsets, making the Christian lifestyle attainable and reachable for everyone who believed. George Fox broke ground for the return to the daily work of the Holy Spirit in every believer's life, which prepared the way for ministers that we see and enjoy today. If you like reading your Bible throughout the day, 
then you ought to say, God, I thank you for using men like John Huss and Martin Luther that will stand up against this so that we can have the right to have the word of God. If you like, amen, glory to God, learning about your new creation reality, then you should say, Father, I thank you that men like John Calvin went against the grain that we can learn who we are in Christ. And if you like being baptized in the Holy Ghost, filled with the Spirit, speaking in tongues, walking in authority, operating in dominion, amen, laying hands on the sick, casting out devils, then you should say, Father, I thank you for using individuals like George Fox that can make sure that I can do this without persecution. And now, my question to you. What part of that religious system are you willing to help the body of Christ progress beyond? In what way are you willing to say, I'll be a social martyr? There's no sense in reading about these people. And we're going to live in the confidence and the security of our own acceptance of society because we're afraid to go against the grain because of what he's teaching, what the Holy Spirit is teaching. I hope it light a fire in you. I hope you were inspired tonight. That's what kingdom history is designed to do. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Glory to God. Our time is up. I'm 15 minutes over. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. And I, I thank you for being patient. I thank you. Amen. Glory to God for listening. Amen. Let's go forward now. You know how we close out. Come on, give me three individuals. Something that stood out to you. Something was a blessing. Raise your hand. Raise your hand so I can see you. Amen. Something that stood out to you, something that was a blessing. We got Pauline Jackson. That's one. Amen. Glory to God. Come on. Is there another? Amen. Pastor J is your hand up. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Pastor J is another. Amen. Come on. Is there another? Something that stood out to you, something that was a blessing. Glory to God. Evangelist Kenyon Johnson. Amen. Minister Antoinette, is your, your hand up, Dr. Antoinette? Is your hand up? Amen. Glory. You'll be last. Then. Okay. We'll go in that order. Dr. Pauline Jackson. Amen. Pastor Jonathan Nichols, Dr. Jonathan Nichols, evangelist, or Dr. Kenyon Johnson, Dr. Antoinette Mays. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to make this quick. So what stood out to me was the part where it says at the age of 11, he had his first encounter with what, what he later repeatedly re reinforced as what he turned, you know. Okay, so it, I thought about my situation when I began my journey with Christ, like learning who God was, because I wasn't brought up in a church as a child. You know, my, I never saw my mom attend church before, none of that. And so when I began to uh, find out who God was myself, I remember like three years in, somebody asked me, when was, when was the first time that you knew that God used you? And so instantly the Holy Spirit, which I didn't know he about the Holy Spirit at the time, but now I know. He showed me, uh, he, he instantly gave me the answer. And what happened was I was in like second grade and one of my classmates, her mom was in an abusive relationship. And so it was rumors all over the school of how her, uh, the man had beat her to death. Now this house, we never, we wasn't allowed to go into nobody's house, but we walked past this house every morning going to and from school where the girl lived. She lived on the second floor. I didn't know that. But the Holy Spirit showed me her mom in the corner, balled up, beating. Like I, I had never saw this lady before. Right. I had never been in their house. Right. Her daughter and I, we were only classmates. But just hearing that story and like the next day I walked past the house and it was like I saw the lady in the corner, balled up. And so I was able to answer that like the Holy Spirit instantly gave me what the answer to the question. Like this was the first time that you ever had an encounter, you encountered me right here. You were young. You didn't know of me. You didn't know of the Holy Spirit. You, I, but I showed you this thing. And so that really, that, that blew my mind. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing that. Amen. We bless God for you. Pastor Jay. Glory to God. This, uh, the story of with him being identified as a Quaker, I thought you were about to say something. Um, <clears throat> Quakers are very prominent in our American history in the facts that you pointed out, just in how they, what they, the role that they played in our American history is not even teached at all. It's not even taught at all in schools on the part that they played. 
and uh definitely just the the fervor and the and the passion that John Fox had is as a reformer of the gospel, the reformer of the kingdom is the is the mindset that we should, that we all should have is this taking the time to diligently seek out what tr- untruths are being taught, what untruths are being or or, or or what truths are being hidden and exposing them. Uh, I mean, he did a he was heard about that uh, destroying the um, the organization of the of the enemy and 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 developing the stronghold of the kingdom. Amen. And in, in, in fact, amen, glory to God. He wasn't a reformer of the gospel or the kingdom. He was a reform. Well, he didn't reform the gospel of the kingdom. He was a reformer of the kingdom, but he wasn't, a, he didn't reform the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. He reformed the operation of the, of the church. He reformed that. Amen. Glory to God by presenting the gospel. Um, amen. And the kingdom of God. Amen. I just want to be clear on that. Amen. I want you to think that these people showed up and changed God's word. No, they changed the way the church was operating and got all the infection out. Go ahead, Dr. Kenyon Johnson. Uh, yes, sir. Um, as a matter of fact, um, that last part where you said, um, he revived the combination of the spirit and the word. And it's something just lit inside of me is like every time the spirit and the word get involved, revival has to happen and everybody just strap up your bootlaces because another one is about to come. Amen. Glory to God. That's good. Amen. I believe so. I believe so. And I believe it's going to happen simultaneously with the darkness that we see going on in the world. We're going to see the we're going to see the greatest out, outbreak and demonstration of of the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the, the operation of the kingdom of God that is going to operate simultaneously. And we're going to have crowds of people that are going to run to the amen. I know people say, well, it's going to be a great falling away. I believe we're in the falling away now. Amen. I believe we're in the falling away now. So when the revival take place, there are going to be many that are going to run to the gospel of the kingdom. Amen. They're not falling away from the kingdom. They're falling away from religion. Amen. Because religion can only seduce. It cannot produce. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Dr. Uh, Antoinette. Amen. Go ahead. I like the part where he was aggressive and courageous in what he was doing. He didn't, he wasn't deterred from doing what the Holy Spirit was telling him to do. And because of that, he had that spiritual power and authority to do what the Spirit was telling him to. And as the Spirit was talking to him, he didn't hesitate, like you didn't hesitate, to pray in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. You are absolutely correct. I thank you for sharing that. Amen. And don't you hesitate either. Amen. Let this be a lesson to spur you on, everybody to spur you on in activity. George Fox, because he was that, he was the one to actually bring the body of Christ, amen, from under that Roman influence. And that's where Quakers came from. I'm gonna tell you who all came from under George Fox. This is how you're gonna know how he impacted, amen, glory to God, uh, the body of Christ. Quakers came from under George Fox. Methodists branched out even more under George Fox, amen. Um, um, Church of God in Christ, Church of God, Church of Christ, uh, United Pentecostal, Amen. Glory to God. Uh, Full gospel. Amen. Word of faith. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, Charismatic movement, latter rain movement, all of that branch from under the umbrella of of a man that began to operate in the combination of the word and the spirit. So if you don't remember nothing else, remember this Rubik's Cube tonight. Remember that what you think you know about God, you don't really know yet. Press into the mysteries men and women of God. May there be a hunger. May there be a hunger that rise in you. That you don't just be satisfied with what is revealed in generations before. That you press it. Uh, Dr. Bell, close us out in prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you right now, God, in the name of Jesus for this lesson. God, we thank you for Pastor Young. God, we thank you for his anointing, God. We thank you for using him tonight, God, to speak this word to our hungry souls, God. Now, God, as we receive this word, God, we ask that you would 
Put it in our souls, God. Put it in our spirits. Put it in our minds, God, that we may run with this, God, that we may not be weary and well-doing, God. We pray right now for favor, increase, and overflow in this word, God. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you would give us the patience, the strength, the courage, the, the, the uh, tenacity, God, to keep moving forward, God. We pray right now in the name of Jesus for every doctor that's in this class right now, God, that you will strengthen us where we're weak and you will build us up where, we, where we're torn down, God. Give us the power, God. Make us hungry, God. Make us hungry for this word, God. Make us hungry for changing lives, God. And we bless you, God. We magnify you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, God. And God, as we get ready to leave this place, but never ever your presence, we ask you, God, that you would be with us until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. God bless. Amen.